if your chord transitions usually look like so. But you want them to be like so. Then you've come to the right place. I listed 15 mistakes collected over the last 16 years of me teaching guitar, so you can avoid them. Enjoy. Ah, you don't play those cowboy chords anymore, you play solos. Fantastic. All 15 mistakes here apply to solo guitar playing too, so sit back and enjoy. Mistake number one is about timing. For most chord transitions, it's best to move all fingers at the same time and make them arrive at the same time. Let's have a look at an example, A minor to F, which you need in so, so many songs, two of them being Losing My Religion by R.E.M. or Johnny Cash's Heard. This is what I often see people do. And here's what A minor to F should look like. Well, this one here is a classic short ways. Take the shortest distance possible for each finger. So a common situation would be G to D, which you need like in all songs, knocking on heaven's door or father and son, for example. Here's what I often see. When they finish playing G, they go down with all fingers for D and then come up again, index finger, then middle and then ring finger. As there are different options to play an open G chord, here are the two most common ones and how to transition properly to D. Fingering number one for G, middle finger, index finger, and ring finger. And if you watch the ring finger, it has the shortest distance to go to D. It goes one string up, same fret. Have a look again. So G, and then the ring finger goes one string up, that's it. That's the shortest distance. Second fingering, even better. Middle, index, ring, and pinky. The ring finger is already in place, so keep it there, don't lift it. You can take off the pressure, but keep touching the string. Which brings us to the next mistake, not using pivot points. And I don't blame you, this is on guitar instructors, because I don't see this tip often enough. But often enough, I see how it helps my students. So for some chord transitions, you can use pivot points, so you can leave fingers in place. A classic chord progression would be E minor to C to D to G, which you can use in Heart of Gold, for example. Here's how you can take advantage of those pivot points to the full. So if you play E minor like that, and then you go to C, you can leave the middle finger in place, and then those two, you keep the shape of those and go straight down to D. And then you leave the ring finger in place when you go back to G, we already talked about that. And then when you go back to E minor, you can leave the index finger in place, or at least just make some space for the middle finger when you go back to E minor. How cool is that? Next one, stay close to the fretboard, close to the strings. Would you agree, the more efficient your chord transitions become, the easier it becomes to play your favorite songs? Which one looks more efficient? Hope your answer is number two. If not, I can't help you anymore. Um, if you have difficulties keeping your fingers close to the fret or close to the strings, what you can do is you can practice silently your chord transitions here and then have your second hand as a barrier here so that your fingers can get away from the fretboard. Or then you're not on silent mode anymore. You play as usual with both hands, but you play in front of a wall, very close to the wall, so that the wall acts as a barrier. Next mistake, not practicing chord transitions separately. You might know the situation, you play a song, let's say it has six chords, you play those six chords over and over again, although you know there is an issue, you can't go from, let's say, D to C. There is the issue, all other chords are fine, and you play those six chords over and over again, instead of addressing the problem, isolating it, because it would save you tons of time because it's easier to focus on a small bit, a very small issue and play that over and over again and you stop wasting your time by playing the chords that you already can play. Now it's going too far, Florian. Mental preparation, what's that supposed to mean? I want to play guitar and I get that, but I see it so often I would feel bad not telling you about it. The issue is that you have a bunch of chords that you play and the moment the next chord needs to be played is the moment that you think of that chord, which is 
too late. The chord will always be too late. Instead, you have to think ahead. Think of the next chord to prepare your brain what's coming next, to prepare your brain for the chord transition. This is what's going on in my mind when I usually play chords. Ah, that tip you hear all the time. But there's so much more to say than just practice slowly. First of all, it is not that easy to slow down or speed up a motion, especially not for beginners, let alone sticking with a very slow tempo. And second, practicing slowly doesn't solve every problem you might encounter on the guitar. For chord transitions, it is relevant if the motion is not clear yet. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take that example from the beginning, A minor to F. Now, if the motion is not right, if you go finger by finger, you practice that over time, this will get smoother and faster, but that's not what you want. You want the right motion to be smooth and fast. And therefore you have to practice very, very slowly indeed and force your fingers to move all at the same time in the right direction. I could start every new mistake you're saying it's a classic, but they really are all classics. You know who's guilty of applying too much pressure on the fretboard? Yeah. To fix this, do this exercise. You place E minor on the fretboard and you play only the strings where you placed your fingers. And then you slowly take off the pressure until you hear that buzzing sound. You hear that? This is the moment you only need to press a tiny bit more. Everything else that you do more is a waste. Poor positioning. I think it's obvious, but sometimes we just forget about it. And I include me. You can't play properly with a position like that. So keep your guitar upright, keep the headstock a bit higher. Line up the elbow with your upper body and then you're good to go. And the issue with not seeing your fingers, you can fix if you play in front of a mirror, then you see your fingers just like you see mine at the moment. A chord transition takes time, so I allow for that time. It almost never sounds good if the next chord is delayed, but it's totally fine if you play the open strings in between chords. Have a listen. You remember seeing a baby grow up? It takes some time to learn to walk and a lot of repetition, repetition, repetition. Same here with your chord transitions. A tip here, keep your guitar in the open, keep it in an obvious place. And during the day, you pick it a few times, give those chord transitions a go and you'll get there. The thumb plays an important role in guitar playing. I'd say it's the most important finger because you have four fingers on that side, but there's only one on the other side. So if you apply pressure here without your thumb, you would push away the guitar neck and the thumb makes sure that it keeps its balance. Now an efficient thumb position is always kind of like opposite the center of pressure applied on the front, which is different for G than it is, for example, for A minor. And what I see a lot of people do is they have their A minor here and the thumb is here, they move to G and they neglect the thumb, which is a problem because it's not only not very efficient, but it also causes pain over time. That's not what we want. So keep your thumb on the move along with your fingers. Now there are chord transitions that are very common and there are others that are more rare. I'd say more rare would be C to E major, for example, or C to A major or G to E major. I wouldn't focus on those unless you have a song in mind where you need that. I would focus on the common ones, G and D back and forth, D and C back and forth, C and A minor, G and E minor, um, D and G, D and A. Those are common chord transitions that you need. If you can manage to keep your hand relaxed like that, this will help you immensely for your chord transitions. A classic that I see is D major. Your little finger has nothing to do and it goes like that, which feels terrible. It feels so tense. So keep all fingers relaxed, including the ones that you don't need. Great exercise for that is start in that relaxed state, keep your fingers relaxed, hand round, relaxed, relaxed, then place your fingers on the fretboard, apply that tiny amount of pressure, you can check the chord if you want, and then repeat. I almost forgot about that. If you need any help with your guitar playing, then check out highguitar.com where you can get one-on-one -on -one lessons. I understand how frustrating it is to be enthusiastic about guitar playing, but not know where to start, or what to do next. And that's why every month I help dozens of people just like you 
to learn guitar quickly and I'd love to do the same for you. These fingernails are almost too long for me to play. It is impossible to play properly with long fingernails that push your fingers away from the fretboard, so cut them. Let's add 15 more things you learned today and what a perfect addition to chord transitions. Watch these 15 must-know strumming tricks.